so the mayor of bristol has confirmed that residents to make it clear to residents that in principle the council will be charging rent for those evacuated anyway talking about evictions we cannot uh, not <laughs> talk about uh, kumba uh, sister nuani can you just tell us a little bit about what kumba is for the listeners that have never heard about you yeah it's um kumba is a long established community building in st paul's from 1974 it was given to the first ethnic group of people namely the rastafarians um and it went through development in the early 90s and became a community center doing training and employment and it's moved from there to the african arts um, across the southwest really um, that's what kumba stands for that's the history that's the legacy um, of that venue uh, okay so is it exclusively west indian initially when it started it was um, but it's changed with um, time really than anything else people wanting to better themselves employment um, education um, the south west west arts was specifically looking at black arts so that was specifically african we took over kumba in 2010 um, and we took that well, we didn't take it away. It lost its funding at the time. We sat and we had a discussion and we felt we wanted Kumba to represent the changes also in the local community. And we just wanted to call it a community centre. OK, so its actual building is owned by the council. So what's been the relationship with the council like? Or well, most of it is, anyway. <laughs> um, what I, I'll just say kind of we're all right with the council until this whole situation started so okay how did it start when there were their first rumblings that the council weren't happy with the way the building's being managed and run um last year um april 22 they came in on a so-called health and safety check for the building um, we in fact we allowed them to come in wasn't a problem <laughs> and a welcome it we haven't seen the council for over seven years in the building so that was fine so they came in um obviously there's one and two things they felt we could do. Um, they listed it. Uh, let's say it was a, a list of ten points. We addressed very quickly eight of the points. And then we held off on the other two largely to do with income. Um, having to pay for a couple of things that they wanted to to have done. And Cumber under our management, is self-reliant. It doesn't get any funding from 2010. We don't get any um, grants from the council. Mm or anybody else was self-reliant. We generate money from renting the units and bookings and so forth. So 2010, um, 2022, when we had a letter in October, um, figured that we figured it was about the health and safety um, check, but the letter actually said, because we were dissolved, the charity status in 2019, and we didn't understand the impact of what that would be because we didn't have any initial governance from the previous or from the council how the building should be managed. We were quite shocked with that. But anyway, um, they seemed to take it quite serious and just decided in October, instead of finishing off the health and safety dialogue, went straight into your trespasses. Trespasses? Yeah. So what do they, I mean, I think it's one of the things that sounds to me as if it's kind of at the nub of this is uh, getting the building up to, you're saying there's a couple of things that they said on health and safety that hadn't been got up to scratch. Uh, well, they suggested that we should do like the water, the legionnaires check, we should check the water, which said was fine. They asked them for electrical overhaul and we were already in the process of doing our annual inspection so we stopped um because we weren't sure what was going on with the yeah. council um i think that was it the minor things were like have you got building insurance reliability who's your health and safety all the minor stuff we were able to tick that box so Almost. surely, I mean, this is a this is a discussion that should have been going on between maybe the deputy mayor Asher Craig or the mayor Marvin Rees uh, and you, which the council officers uh, would then implement. So, a negotiation between the mayor and the people running the building, i.e., you, uh, to be sorted out through the council officers. So, it, what, what, what happened? What's been going on? Yeah, my, I mean, I'm not um, negative to or oblivious to 
the community and community development because all my track record of employment have always been in the inner city working. Is this a section of the council, community development? Yeah. 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 They have a department and I've, I've been involved in the, another community centre and we've had community development support uh, on issues there. So with the Kumba Centre, one would expect there's a table discussion rather than what angle they've taken with us at the moment. Well, as I understand it, with big companies and countries, if you're going to a legal dispute, that's because all negotiations have broken down, but it doesn't sound as if there's been much in the way of negotiation. Now, uh, I'm sure the council will say, well, we've tried to negotiate with the Kumba, we found it impossible. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, you would say to yourself, what's the definition of negotiation? Uh, it comes in different forms, and for me as a community worker, I would like something like this a table discussion where we can see who we're talking to, we can raise the issues. If we're lacking understanding around the table, you can see that, you can explain. We didn't get that. We From October, we just got a letter and they kept the letters coming saying, you haven't answered our questions. We're thinking, we've answered all your questions, what more? We, and we kept a a saying, we've answered your questions, but we would like a table discussion. So every letter they sent us, our letters would always end saying we're sorry that you don't want to meet with us but we still would like to meet well, with you does sound as if you're willing to meet with them but they're not willing to meet with you i mean we are in the situation aren't we with uh, the mayor marvin reese and possibly and probably uh, the deputy mayor asher craig uh two at the mayor's office uh they are on their way out i mean they're really necessary marvin isn't going to be standing again um it, i wonder if he's really committed to sorting out problems like this it may be he's thinking more about what he's going to be doing after he finishes as mayor but anyway george what do you make of this whole process where something actually a very important part of the city which was put there uh, in the 1970s as a resource for the west indian community particularly rastafarians at that time uh it is now the council are now uh, dealing with it in this way almost basically through their legal services department sending them legal letters it does seem clumsy again and i think it's uh, just a sign of control freakery i think that the council it's you know it's similar to the bear pit the council want to have control of these things and i've always felt that actually you get much better you get much more out of people if you give them the responsibility and allow them to get on with things that are about their own community um you know so good leadership to me is giving permission but this seems to be exactly the opposite um i've known kwumba for many years i mean off, on and off and i've been to events there which um and it's a, a great space for st paul's and the and and the community um wasn't it? I used to go to. They had dominoes. They have dominoes there. It was always yeah. great fun, and the slapping of don dominoes on the tables. And um, and uh, a colleague of mine did uh, did the conversion of it many many years ago. Um, so I cannot see what the council on are on about, other than this wanting control of everything instead of allowing people to do their own thing well hang on because there was a similar thing in a way that happened whilst you were mayor george and that was the carnival you stepped in and you said actually the people running the carnival uh which is obviously a very important west indian tradition in the city uh it's something we all love people come from all over the country too uh but you didn't think that they were uh, capable of doing it so i wonder if we can make some sort of comparisons between you know marvin and uh, asher's actions and yours back on the carnival in those days well, maybe you, maybe you can, but I think there was real reason for that because the carnival did get into quite a dangerous situation. I think the carnival is brilliantly run now and I've written about it and have said that, you know, if only all our big events could be run more like the carnival that has a bit of leeway. Um, and, uh, you know, you compare the carnival to what the disaster that was the, um, the, the the Harbour Festival, for instance, which was very control freakery, um, where people were corralled, cor corralled into these fenced areas that were nothing to do with the harbour. I didn't, un and um, you know that that happened just after St Paul's, and but I, I went down to the St Paul's Carnival and just thought it was 
great. I mean, I don't know that everybody who lives in St. Paul's thinks it's great, but it it had a wonderful atmosphere and, and a sense of of freedom. And there was, you know, there were the, there was no real trouble. Um, when I when I interfered, there had been some very real trouble. I mean, you know, some 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 very nasty crime. But that's not the fault of the festival. But I think it did need reviewing. Yeah, I I just wanted to say, um, in terms of um, the Cumber Centre, I think what people need to understand here: the council don't want the building back; they want people out. They want the board out. That's what the situation oh. is. That's clearly documented so i'm not saying anything that's i'm not supposed to talk about mm. it's something that they've written in their letters it's something that they've written to the unit holders who are our clientele we bought them there they're telling the unit holders that you're okay but kumba project that's us mm. the board has not left and and we'll go to court which is where we are now so i'm trying to be careful about what i'm yeah. saying but we are now in the courtroom mm -hmm with this issue that I believe could have been dealt with round the table. Yeah, I think, well, that's the thing I right. think that's there has to be the political will to yeah. do that. that. Marvin has to want to come and sit down with you and talk it through exactly. uh, face to face, yeah. I think, and he doesn't seem to want to do that. He's got more important, he's got off to Dubai, he's in God knows Kigali or wherever. Yeah. He's got very much more important things to do but than um, look after the West Indian community in St Paul's. There should never be good reason for refusing to sit round the table. Well, I just think that is, uh, you know, I'm not saying that of Marvin, I'm just saying that whoever it is, I regard that as a very arrogant attitude that you're not prepared, or maybe it's a slightly scared attitude. They just don't want to have that conversation. But why not? The, the, the centre is run by the community, as yeah. you said early on. Kumba is an early day asset. Absolutely. Yeah, it was given to the community in the mm. 70s to manage. Yeah. We've been managing it for 10 years, self-reliant. Yes, we're not. None of us up there are getting a salary. Yeah? No. None yeah. of us up there are getting a salary. We're, we've got it full house. There's no space for you to rent except the, the hall mm. and the meeting room. So this thing around, we're, we're not doing anything in Kumba or Kumba's not doing anything is a misinterpretation that's really affecting Kumba well you right know what now. i think in a way this is bullying it's like your face doesn't fit sister noy exactly i mean <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to get to say the personal side of this whole situation on the air but that is the known fact to everybody in the community this is not about the Kumba center this is about you Noni. yeah 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 what <laughs> is it about me oh i've forgotten we don't really you're not on. qualified something like on. that you haven't ticked the right boxes i just don't get on with one and two people at <laughs> well that's so wrong <laughs> that's so <laughs> that is so wrong I'd, I'd just like to say something about should the be center, judged on its merit. Know, as a local mm. resident yeah. that pops in there from time to time it's an absolutely lovely environment in there you meet mm. all sorts of people that's great there's no like sort of um cctv cameras scanning you mm. s uh, as you're coming in you know a security guard checking your uh blood group or whatever yeah. it is it's a very open and it's a very actually a very west indian zone yeah it's still west indian orientated but it is very much community we get loads of people who come in there and say oh i've never been here before oh it's people are so nice in here and they're actually white people younger yeah. generation yeah, yeah. Oh, it's really comfortable here I, I just feel like i can be myself in here so to me that's that's a joy yeah in the community yes we we know the legacy well, Let's, this, we this know is the what history. we stand to lose yeah. right so when we had that big public meeting you organized uh, yeah. about was it about six or eight weeks ago the place was packed there was a commitment from the audience we're going to defend this place Absolutely. and we're going to defend you yeah. Yeah. actually you that's yeah. like hundreds <laughs> a couple of hundred people behind you basically saying yeah. let the council try and that's exactly what we did in the end we were told not to leave the letters say go. The community, for the first time, we've had a public meeting, which was over 100 people. And I, I would say 95%, if not 98%, said stay. And that's what we're doing. Anyway, so oh. what's been going on this week? Uh, because you were in court, weren't you? On, <laughs> or you were nearly in court on Monday uh, down at the Civil Justice Centre. Yeah, we, we've been fortunate to, and again, I have to be careful, we've got legal support, and they were able to intervene, and the case was vacated. Um, and set back for a later date, which will give Kumba, although I believe we have it, 
the chance to prepare a, a, a strong defence on the issues. I can't say I, I, know, I know what was said. Well, I, I had a peep at anything. some of the court papers, and the first paragraph of the court papers was just factually inaccurate. I mean, I don't know if this is maybe maybe Bristol legal services aren't quite up to scratch, George. Um, well, I'm not going to blame, <laughs> blame officers. I don't know whether this is instigated by officers or by the politicians, but I think that it is just a fundamental failing not to talk it through. And, um, you know... Well, George, talk, the, the word mm, trespasses, yeah, that mm, alone. Yeah. yeah. We know, everybody knows what that. We all looked it up, but we all know what it means. And Absolutely. we're saying that's not us. No. If you want to call us something else and get a reason to get us out of the building, call us something else. Well, well, sister, we've been sister, there for 13 yeah, years. Yeah. Sister noani has got the community behind her. I mean, you know, sure. not just me. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole load of us. Uh, yeah. So what, what's your advice to her? I think uh, put pressure on, gentle pressure, on a wider body of councillors to inter interfere with this rather than just dealing with the one or two that uh, are driving this. But who? who? We, yeah. we have local... Ashley Council. Amira, yeah. Amira no, Cole no, no, is a. Uh, no, Amira no, Cole is, won't get involved. Yeah, well, Amira Cole's. Neither of the Ashley Council is involved. Yeah, three of them. And they're, they're all pretty much as one. Oh, well, I think probably the council's probably right here. That's their take. Well, that's. That's sad. I would have thought that the councillors would see the benefit at least of having a proper conversation. <laughs> There's an election yeah. coming along, folks. You know, mm. <laughs> Martin, do you want to just say something about this? It's been a, a, you know, mm. a whole interesting, for us anyway, as a local residents, uh, it, to see uh, it's almost like uh, some people from afar have come into St Paul's and they're trying to close down the very thing that makes it a great place to live. Well, I'm, I just want to make a comment, really, because obviously I'm listening. I know people around the table know more about this than I do. But there is an election coming up in May. Now, what is the political affiliation of the three councils? In Two this, Greens so and a, a Labour, uh, Amira Cole's Labour, but she supports the council. Yes, but I would have thought that, that this should be an issue for the Greens if they want to take control of Bristol City Council. They can say, well, we're going to oppose the decisions of the current Labour Council vote for us come May and that's that's what we, that's what we're about I mean that's what elections are for that's, 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 that's all I'll say I think the Labour councillors would be concerned if they found that the Greens were taking a much more um, conciliatory approach to this uh, in the meantime can you just tell us mm. a bit about what's going on over the next couple of weeks at Coomba you know the sort of events you're you're holding well coming out of the uh, since the case was set back we were discussing again what do we do because we've been kind of stagnant and we've been told to just carry on as normal so we yesterday i put out a shout to the unit holders and to other people in the community that cumbers open as normal and we've lost a significant amount of income over the last year and a half and time, because I we imagine. haven't been able to do anything our premises license was taken away Everything was stopped with the council. So we're playing by compliance at the moment, which means every, anything we do down there finishes by 11. All our best income coming in for an income-generated group is usually when we hire out the building and go up to at least 1 o'clock if need be. We can't do that yeah. anymore. Has there been any pressure, do you think, from local residents on the council yeah, you, you are on a, you are right mm -hmm. on, right on, right next yeah. to a whole load of resident residential streets aren't you when I mean, you do have gigs on in yeah there, they're just shot everybody the majority of people that i've spoken to about cumber they're like what what are you talking about you know because we're not a disorderly group it, as a management group actually we're quite nice we, we take you care, come across as very we take, nice we take care of the street <laughs> sometimes we sweep we sweep the road if yeah. there's an event Correct. we go out we pick up the balls if they should uh, invite they, marvin down to give you a hand <laughs> when I seen him there once, but it wasn't to us he came to. But I, I don't. I try not to call Marvin or Asher's name because I know they feel it's about. I'm saying it's about them, but they know what the situation is. Mm -hmm. You fail to come and talk to us. You don't want to talk to us. Yeah, we're sitting there just waiting. Now we're in court. Mm. Why we don't so need wrong. to go to court? So it's like Why? a bad divorce, Why? isn't it? And yeah. it, you know. <laughs> That, bu that it's building such a and waste. the people in there, especially yeah. the volunteers, when there was a heavy drugs activity on Hepburn Road, our people on the inside of Hepburn Road, the youngers, went out and shifted the guys and say, look, especially my son was there, and he said, look, my mom's here. You mm. can't be coming down here. And they just moved. 
Mm. They just moved. So we're quite good. We're more than just community people in the building. We serve the community because we live here. I'm historical with Kumba. I know what it stood for and I want it to benefit other people. I don't want to hold on to it. I'm not trying to hold on to it. I'm ready to move on. But when you say move on, move on to who? There has to be a process. Mm -hmm. And the council need to understand when we took over, there was an issue. The building was momentary left vacant. And we got in there quick time. And we were met with the lady who was managing the building. She came in and she sat with us for about three months. This time round, nobody wants to sit with us. No one wants to talk to us. Just out, out, out. Well, it's not happening. It's right a now. whole sort of aloofness, George, a sort of distance. This council is almost as if it's on the moon. Well, Sorry. I'm puzzled about it. Um, I do think it's... It's very strange. I mean, what you made me do is, is go and find out more and talk to some of the councillors and see what's going on. I mean, I don't have any um, official say in this, but I do know some of the people involved. So I will, you know, I will certainly do. I don't, I don't want to make it my business I don't to find out. Labour the point mm. over Cumba, but there is this whole issue of slavery, isn't there? That uh, when Marvin Rees came became mayor as a mixed race mayor, Bristol's first. Uh, there was a bit of pressure on him saying, look, we've got a big, big slavery legacy here in Bristol. Uh, there's, um, there was a campaign for quite a while to get some sort of uh, exhibition centre to do with slavery. Of course, we had the whole, well, it was like world news shattering business of uh, Edward Colson's statue being chucked into the floating harbour uh, and even other actions around the world. People seeing this and thinking, yeah, there's someone else I'd like to do that to. Uh, so w what do you make of the um, Marvin record with the the legacy of slavery because bristol was involved in it and it just seems important to make sure that you know we should be remembering uh the the, the fact the facts of bristol's involvement but also maybe looking at today and things like modern slavery even mass maybe wage slavery yeah. where people simply cannot afford to eat i mean i think it was fortunate for bristol that it had a black mayor at the time and i think marvin came out quite well from it to be honest um I think, you know, what would I have done? It, it's always difficult to know, but I think I would have been at a severe disadvantage compared with Marvin being a, a middle-class white man or middle-aged or old white man than, than, than being the black mayor that, that Marvin is. So I think, you know, I'll, I'll hand it to him. I, th I think that's one of the best things he did of course you can criticize some of it i think it's a shame we're not using the plinth of the colston plinth in a creative well, way on, i what, think it's what, not why, opportunity. what did marvin do i mean it wasn't marvin it was a demonstration it was a oh, black, black no, lives no, matter no, no the demonstration i'm not talking about the demonstration i think you know the aftermath of it um the fact that the Colson statue is now housed in the in the museum. That it has been used as an educational tool. Um, the fact that we have now and th you know that was in process that we've now changed the names of of the Colson Hall to the Beacon and um, and other things like that. Um, yeah, I've, I would find it difficult to criticise him about that. Sister, Sister, Sister Nuani, what you, you wouldn't. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't when you talk about slavery and what that stands for. Because coming back to the situation with Kumba, and it's documented in the council's letter, and everybody knows in the community, mm -hmm. they said to take this black board management committee out and put another black group in. Mm. And the community is saying, what black group? Why do you want to divide us? That sounds like the post-Cold War that's going on does, with our young, it? with our young yeah, people. The black people, you know, the council for me, how can you, how dare you actually say in writing, we want to take one black group out and we want to tender the building to the black community. That, that to me is just so wrong. It, it really squashes everything we've done as the current management committee in terms of equalities and developing a space that still has the legacy it's still being black managed but it's open to the community yeah i don't I mean, get it's, that at no, all it's it's clear sign of wanting our people running it rather than exactly yeah, it wanted yes. yeah yeah and uh 
I think that's really unfortunate, and I but think that quit. when you're and, in the council house as a politician, and that's your mentality, yeah. and it's out there, then to me, I question whether or not you're you're fit enough to represent the people with that kind of mindset, because you're creating division. But yeah, I think that's amongst really, the people. That's, really, really, that should go to the whole cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they should be aware of this is actually happening in Saint Paul's. Absolutely, some of your officers. So I'm not blaming the whole cabinet. Mm. I'm not even saying. Asha and Marvin, they know who it is. Mm. I'm not even saying the whole council. I'm saying the asset team because yeah. they're the drivers of this situation. You understand? I've got nothing to fear. Some people might say when you talk, um, you could affect your case or whatever you're doing. No, it's not about that. I, I'm going to court for the truth. Yeah. I want to be heard. Yeah, I'm being told to t tone down a bit. Tone down what? <laughs> I don't need to tone down. You've toned me down. I've been in Cumber for 13 years and I've been there before that. Mm. I've been running that building self-reliant. I sweep up, I clean, I do whatever. I'm not complaining. But now you're telling me I must go? Listen, 400 years we've been here. This is not the person you tell to go. Mm. Yeah. It sounds to me like you, you just, mm. you just uh, got hired. Uh, you're the right person for the job. You fit all the criteria. And it worries me that the councillors are sitting there thinking, well, actually, we're going to have a few secret interviews and we want this one, this one, this one, this one, and we're not going to tell anybody <laughs> who they are. Well, anyway, look, both of you, uh, if there's, if, uh, if there's some sort of uh, campaign, website or anything like that, Sister Nwani, that people can find, uh, that can follow what, what you're doing. I mean, I've actually been reporting on it quite well in the Bristol Post. Yeah. The nicest thing, again, with us down there, we, we, we weren't trying to s strum up a witch hunt with the council you know why because we feel we haven't done anything wrong yes. yeah we're in truth yeah so there is nothing there isn't no campaign all i do know is if we go to court there'll be a lot of people down there you understand yeah because yeah. yeah. people are just saying it's just wrong it's just unfair yeah yeah, yeah the truth must prevail and isn't yeah. it funny that at the same time we've had the people getting around a table over in Qatar over the Gaza killings and some sort of negotiation happening and uh, a peace slowly maybe coming to that horrible situation out in the Middle East. Why can't we do it here in Bristol? Just sit around a table, talk talk things through. This is slightly people easier dynamics. too. <laughs> <laughs> people think, dynamics. Yeah. We're yeah. not the first. There's been known cases in Bristol. The recent one was the farm that was under threat of closure, they negotiate, and it's all right. So what's wrong with Cumber? Yeah, yeah, they have also been... What's threat wrong with There was also a threat to the Rastafarian Centre, wasn't there, on Grosvenor Road, and the, 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 we, everyone was scratching their what's going on here. And, and am, am I right in saying that, that the council uh, pulled back on that? It, well, it's resolved. Good. Well, that's the <laughs> it's moment. resolved. That's all I'm hearing. Yeah. It's okay. resolved. Anyway, I think there's nothing worse than dividing communities. We should be doing everything we can Maybe we to try and pull them together. Not pay our council tax until they get their head screwed on. Anyway, look, both uh, George Ferguson and Sister Nwani from Kumba Project, thanks very much for joining us.